Hello everyone, I reached 10,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. 10,000 people thought, hey, I'd like to see more of this Dutch weirdo. Well, thank you all so much for subscribing. It really means a lot to me. Anyway, I think it's uh, about time for my first collaboration. So for this video, I teamed up with uh, Joseph and Joseph from Good and Basic. And the idea is that we each recreate a theme of one of our videos. So in this video, I'm going to make charcoal inspired by their video, and they are going to make an hydrogen generator inspired by my video. So let's get to it. Okay, so we'll first show the Skype conversation I had with Joseph Bjork, and then I will show the experiment. I was just re-watching some of your videos. You have some really, really good stuff. Thanks. How's the solar steam engine project going? Very well. I have uh, the cylinders and the valves ready now. And uh, yeah, I was now working on the gasification project. So uh, that's on hold for a short while. And then I will uh, go further with it. So. Uh, that is super, super cool. I, gasification yeah. is, is one of those things that I find incredibly fascinating because yeah. during World War II there were so many people who ran their cars on that. Are you going to try doing that with your lawnmower again like you did with the hydrogen? Yeah, maybe. Uh, there's of course a lot of possibilities uh, with it. And what I did now is just creating a loop so it gasificates itself with the gas that comes off of the wood. It burns and keeps the paralyzation going. So and that really? worked very well. Awesome. And so it was just a continuous loop. Yeah. We tried to do and, something uh, similar with our charcoal retort, but it hasn't worked remotely well enough to... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the only problem was that because it's, of course, an experimental setup, that this uh, paint can, the lid popped off because the pressure raised too much, uh, or the, the gas burner was blown out because the pressure got too high. So it's, it was a victim uh, of its own success. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I, I saw your video about that big barrel, a big fire. Uh, it was uh, really cool to see uh, what you explained about the, the fire that uh, was spreading through the grass. And when, once you put it out, the fire, that's, it couldn't burn, of course. So it was yeah. very nice. It's nice that you explained that it's a very good way to uh, prevent further spreading of the fire. So Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a, a management practice where people will set the, the forest on fire on purpose in an area that's forest fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, what spiked my interest most was that uh, the um, uh, the barbecue that you used in the same video to uh, paralyze the wood. I saw all that smoke coming off, and I thought, well, that smoke is of course combustible, and couldn't that be used to uh, keep the paralyzation going, and therefore you uh, have less uh, uh, charcoal burned? Because of course, at the bottom, you burn some charcoal to keep it going in that right. uh, set. So, and in this setup, you don't waste any charcoal. So that's the benefit, that, of that course. That would be fantastic to be able to yeah. use yeah. that energy instead of just letting it go off into the atmosphere. Yeah, and the, the idea I had was, that what if we all do this, like this, burn wood like this, and just bury the coal? Then you remove carbon from the atmosphere. Of course, it's not very useful as long as we keep burning coal from fossil fuels, but well, the idea for the same amount and we're planting more trees, it, it'd be hard to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it will be, uh, uh, we will be able to do that, but <laughs> it's just a thought. Sure. Yeah. Have you, have you done any research into biochar or uh, gardening? There's no. a, if you bury charcoal, it does, isn't just carbon sequestration. It actually, um, it has some major benefits for, for soil structure. And so okay. you can actually increase agricultural yields by burying charcoal. And so it's like win, win, win all over the place. Yeah, I saw a documentary about the uh, the, the soil in the Amazon. Yes. That they have some secret recipe of coal and some other stuff to make the ground fertile there. And they still don't know exactly what they use. So yeah. I found this interesting what that coal was doing for the soil. Yes. So, it it yeah. acts a little bit like a, a sponge, a nutrient sponge, uh, and is able to pull in the nutrients and most importantly provide a, a habitat for the microbes that make the soil oh. fertile in the first place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Good stuff. And uh, how is your hydrogen generating going? So I haven't built it yet. I'm just going to go to the shop today to try to purchase some of that nylon fabric for the divider because I would yeah. love to be able to, to split it and keep it separate without you know, running into the difficulties of explosive gases. Um, <laughs> ideally, what I'd love to do is I'd love to, to make hydrogen fuel and run it through a lawnmower or something similar to what you did. But yeah. I think for right now, I'm just going to settle for making the splitter cell and polymer. Just one step at a time. 
one step at a time. <laughs> Instead of nylon, you could also use um, uh, just pure cotton. If you have uh, like a cotton sheet, uh, you could use that. And it's of course uh, easier to come by because uh, apparently that is not affected by the sodium hydroxide. Uh, not at all. Because, no, because uh, they actually use sodium hydroxide to make purify it and to also to make cellulose. And it's of course almost 100% right. cellulose cotton. So uh, it's uh, a guess and I'm 99% sure and it's something I need to test myself too. But I, I think I'm going to try that. And if, uh, the only difficulty yeah. is that we use, uh, if you use nylon, you can just melt the sides so it's uh, uh, closed and uh, does not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it doesn't uh, fray uh, on the edges yeah. where the... the okay. yeah, yeah. But I'm going to solve that, I think, by just uh, putting some uh, glue that can resist the sodium hydroxide on the sides. And then you stop. How do you call that? Fraying. Okay, yeah. To stop that, so uh, I think that would work too. But so you can try that. Uh, that is super cool. I, I had no idea. It it seems really counterintuitive that cotton would work for that because you know I think of organic things dissolving in solvent. Yeah, yeah. I guess but cotton has, has, has some superpowers. Yeah, <laughs> super cotton. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, great. Day. Thanks great. for the conversation and uh, see you soon. Perfect. Okay, so this is the setup I'm going to use for the parallelization process. And of course I have here my, uh, my can with pieces of wood, which are going to be parallelized. And uh, this is going to be put under here. So to start the process, I will open this valve and ignite that burner just with propane to start it off. Once it gets hot enough, then the wood gas uh, can go through this pipe into this container and this container is just to uh, separate all the tar and the burnt sugars and acids and water vapor so that it won't be squirted out of the burner and then of course the gas comes out of this container and goes through the burner once it produces enough wood gas that I can keep it burning then I can turn off the propane and it will be a self-sustaining process and of course uh, this is also a process that could get very much out of hand because there's no control in how much wood gas is being produced, which of course more gas means bigger fire, means more gas and a bigger fire. So in case that happens, I will just uh, uh, put out the flame, but uh, let's first see if it will work. These pipe connections I just uh, glued in with some heat resistant uh, coating. And there's just a quarter inch nut on the other side. And then I put on this uh, steel bucket with a hole in it, uh, some room for the hose to just uh, contain the flame a bit better so not all the heat goes around it. So, um, well, let's light it up and see how it goes. And of course I'm doing this in my uh, forge because uh, where else should I light a fire? Let's light her up. <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't expect that. It's just burning off its own wood gas now. Let's give it a little bit of propane to give it a little bit more heat. Oh, okay. So it's more a matter of uh, a good insulation now and containing that heat more because now it's uh, but the gas is now completely off flame is still burning from the wood gas so self-sustaining paralyzation at least this is a proof of concept as you can see it still dies down for a while but that's because there's I think too much air running around it. You can see this uh, big flame up here which is all just the wood gas burning and I'm going to put a couple of bricks around it so we have less cold air running into the whole system. Okay so the lid popped off and that's why it couldn't get itself going and now uh, even without this uh, can around it 
uh, it still keeps firing itself up so it's actually better than I hoped because it's now producing more and more gas but when I started it up huh, now it's going out of hand um, this is really amazing by the way but this will pop out maybe I should just blow out the flame before it pops again let it cool down okay it stopped working now because this can got too hot and all the water vapor and all the other stuff tar and oils and acids or whatever uh, start boiling and disrupts the flame so I need to let it cool down for a bit now then I'm going to try it again and uh, see if I can completely paralyze this wood okay there was nothing going on only a lot of water in here so I, uh, I dumped that out and now we're gonna start the process again um, for a moment I was afraid that just the propane that was being pushed in these cans uh, just fed the burner for a while and although that is true for a few seconds you can see by this experiment that that's not the case because everything is cooled down now the burner is burning and if I turn it off goes out so um, it stays burning for a couple seconds but the, the burning that it did before was all from wood gas burning so uh, nice to know for experiment's sake so let's start it up make it all nice and hot again oh so the can popped open again Okay, so that's about all I could get out of it. So now just uh, let's uh, disassemble it and let's see the result. Okay, it's not completely charred or not at all. So, but very much charred at the bottom. And it's probably just too much stuff coming out of that can. Mm. There's a lot of water in here. Okay, so the water was clearly the problem because there's no spluttering going on anymore. The only problem now is that the can just pops open because it's probably a little bit lubricated by the tar and stuff. So, uh, well, this is a proof of concept. It works. I did not paralyze all the wood in this uh, setup. But you can see that the flame still burns. This is not a propane that's being pushed into the cans and now still burning. So it's really the wood gas that's burning. So, uh, yeah pretty much a success and uh, I think now it's time to scale it up to make a bigger unit and uh, see how that goes you just let it burn you can hear now that it's uh, escalating itself the pecan will pop in a few seconds I think it's really amazing how well this works You can see that this moisture is still a problem oh, and then it popped again so this moisture is still a problem and uh, yeah, I'll have to see that I make some extra separation device or something that just cools this uh, container because I think that's the problem this gets so hot that it starts evaporating water again which goes through the burner and uh, messes with the combustion 
Okay, that's it for this video. So go check out Good and Basic. They have a lot of videos about uh, philosophy and uh, technical history. It's all very interesting. So go subscribe to their channel. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, click the notification bell and see you next time.